Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, everybody. This is your meteorologist, DT, from WX Risk, the commander of chaos, the captain of catastrophe, the colonel of confusion, and we're going to talk about this week in weather. Lots of talk about the pattern. I know many of you think the pattern is like non-wintery and uh, not being a big deal, and the winter is already in trouble, and so on and so forth. We're going to get to all that in the topics here coming up. So, uh, let's get started here with our presentation. Uh, first, there's a picture of my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, of course, there you can reach me on the Verizon email or the uh, Gmail. There's the uh, Twitter page for operational weather and, of course, the Facebook page. And here our topic is going to be, of course, the uh, mid-December overall pattern. And then, of course, the current event, which is you know moving through the Ohio Valley into the northern middle Atlantic and New England, uh, ice and snow and rain event. And then we'll take a look at the last uh, week of December 2019, see if there's anything happening for Christmas, after Christmas, or through up through New Year's. So let's get started here. Here we take a look at the current service map on this uh, Sunday evening. It's approximately uh, 10, actually about 11.30 now, 11.15. So there's our latest uh, service map. We can see our front here running right across uh, the deep south here, uh, as you can see, just like this. And then there's our seasonally cold high pressure, not a really big Arctic high pressure, but cold enough to support some snow. And then this here is the radar. You can see our significant snow line right in here. We, the radar says it's already reached northern Virginia, but apparently that's not quite true. Uh, Central Maryland um, they're having some radar issues in Sterling, I've been told. Still, a significant snow here in the Ohio Valley. You can see all in this area quite, quite coming down quite a bit there. Uh, very nice a snow event for those guys, I must say. All right, uh, if we took a li that little more regionally here, we can see the snow. Uh, very nice in central Illinois, central Indiana, central Ohio. Nice big bands of uh, moderate snow here. Pretty good snow for those areas for uh, mid-December. Uh, All right, the temperatures last two weeks, yeah, it's been mild. Uh, I told you two weeks ago, which was the last update. Sorry, I couldn't do one since then. But that the cold pattern was going to collapse. I did say that, if you recall. And sure enough, it has. You can see the temperatures are substantially milder from across much of the country. You know, this uh, stuff in here, this red color, that's, uh, you know, 8, 10 degrees above normal. And then in here, it's, you know, 4 to 6 degrees above normal. Only in New England, down to Virginia, has temperatures of a little bit below normal. For, so it's been it's been my, all last two weeks, no doubt about that. Our precipitation here, oh, again, the last look at the last two weeks. Notice that the East Coast is seeing, seeing the best rains. About two to four inches of rains above the normal here, and then across the Dakotas and over the western United States. The plains of the Midwest have been fairly dry relative to normal. If we look at percentages of normal, we can even see that even more. Notice again here, uh, the best rains, precipitation up and down the east coast. That's a good sign for later on this winter. We can keep that storm track going. And then here, the southern energy coming to the west coast and across the Dakotas. But in here, it's been particularly dry so far the, the first half of December. All right, what's going on the pattern here? Let's take a look at our overall pattern as of Sunday afternoon. And we can see several important features here. Um, now, if you take a look at this, we do have some high latitude blocking here a little bit. Um, across northern Greenland here. So this might constitute a neutral or negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation. There's our polar vortex right here. But of course, it's in north central uh, Canada by Baffin Island. So uh, that means that the NAO is probably neutral. We have the positive anomalies here, but you have this negative anomaly there. So uh, and then here's our flow. And notice we're, we're getting a little bit of cold air in this way. You can see the flow coming out of Canada very nicely, bringing the cold air in. But we also have our Pacific flow. So this is clearly a split in the pattern. Now, the one part of the jet goes over the ridge, as you can see. Another part's coming in from California. They're getting hammered. Uh, you know, and again, if you know people going out west, if you're headed out west for the, for the holidays, tremendous skiing here in the Swasax, the Sierras, uh, the Cascades, the Rockies. Uh, the bitter roots, all tremendous snows in the west. I gotta say, they're off to a great, great start there. Uh, now that's not good news for the eastern United States, but so far that's that's where the pattern is. And then the flow is going like this, and you can see. So we do have some cold air into it coming in back into the country here, and we can see that by taking a look at our 850 temperature anomalies. Now, uh, I, in case you don't know how to read this, this is the zero line. You see where the purple and the light green is? That's the zero line. So you can look at the zero line right here. All right. So that's where the seasonally cold temperatures are. But the real serious cold is right here where it begins around uh, 10 degrees. See that dark green area? That's minus 10. So that's where the real serious cold is. You can see the cold there is like this. 
So and of course it's severe cold up in here where it should be. So you do have Canada's pretty cold and into this a good portion of uh, the central and northern U.S. Not severely cold, but seasonally cold. And that's a change from what we were seeing because but earlier uh, we had a lot of cold there, though much further north than this. Now this is the uh, one of the things I want to point out to you is that we're seeing a trend here for a lot of coastal storms. So this is a map, if you recall, we had two or three of them in October, in mid and late October. Then we had this one November 16th. Remember that storm? Okay, now obviously it was a rainstorm, but look at the high. This was January. This would be a nice snowstorm for North Carolina and Virginia. No doubt about that. All right, so now this is another one in the map. This is November 24th. We had another coastal storm. And then here we had one on November, uh, uh, I guess that was uh, um, November 20th and 21st, I believe. And you can see again, a big Midwest storm, another uh, going to the East Coast here. So a lot of storms we've had here. And then this image is um, uh, December 2nd, another big coastal storm. Um, uh, that uh, a lot of big snow in the mountains, that storm was, rain on the coast. And then uh, finally, uh, this one here, December 14th, only a couple days ago. So uh, if the pattern were cold like this, this would be a very active stormy pattern for the heart of the winter if you had the cold air and so on and so forth in place. So we are getting events on the East Coast. So you got to keep that in mind. I think that's a good sign for later on in the winter. All right, let's take a look at the current event. Now, this here is the obviously the European here from midday. You can see the precipitation moving up. Here's our low pressure area, probably uh, right in this area here, another low here. And there's our front, as you can see. And we have a little high pressure up to the north, but not much. And good snow. And as the snow comes east, this low is going to continue to track in this direction. So the warm air here is going to get lifted northward, and that's why it's going to change over. Uh, so there's no doubt about it. Now, uh, this here is the NAM model from uh, this afternoon. You can see it's got a little bit of snow here in Winchester, Martinsburg, you know, the eastern portions of the West Virginia Panhandle, and western and central Maryland. And then there's some ice here in the Shenandoah Valley, uh, as you can see with the temperatures here. Um, trying to keep the cold air in place at the low levels in the valleys. Uh, if we look at this breaking down in terms of precipitation type, again, from the NAM, you can see this is 2 a.m. on Monday morning. Now, it's got the snow north of D.C. in Hagerstown, Fredericks, Martinsburg, Winchester, uh, Cumberland, Fossburg. You can see that. And then into the West Virginia panhandle, southwest Pennsylvania and Ohio. The bottom right image, now this here is uh, 5 a.m. You can see right here. Uh, you can see the 5 a.m. And uh, now the snow is into just about the D.C., northern Virginia, Hagerstown, pushing towards Baltimore. A lot of ice here in the Shenandoah Valley coming in, eastern portions of the West Virginia panhandle. Um, uh, this is uh, 8 a.m. and again at 10 a.m. And by 10 a.m., the whole thing's over and done with. So uh, that's not a surprise, you know, with the warmer coming up here. One of the things that's interesting about this is that the temperatures, this is the temperatures at 4 a.m. in the Shenandoah Valley. And these temperatures are not that cold. It's very borderline, you know, 30, 32, 31 degrees, Harrisonburg, Charlottesville, 36. So they're out of it, it looks like. And then down towards, you know, uh, Hot Springs and then up in this area as well. You can see, though, it's, it's um, all this area in here, it's very marginal temperatures. That's 4 a.m. Monday. And this is um, 9 a.m. Monday. And again, we still have a little bit of cold air in the Shenandoah Valley, but then it's quickly scoured out. All right. The upper air pattern shows what's going to happen with the system. Uh, the big uh, main trough here in the, the, uh, in the southern jet stream, you can see this big piece here. There's a northern piece here. We have a bit of a blocking in Canada and a negative NEO. That's uh, in Greenland. That's nice to see. But again, we keep getting these big pieces of energy coming in here from the Pacific. So... Um, that's keeping the pattern. But notice we're not getting any big ridging on the west coast. You have a little bit of ridge here, but all this is coming in. It's, so we're not getting a big Arctic flow coming from Canada. That's one of the reasons why we're not cold enough. So the low pressure is here at the surface. This is on Tuesday, uh, um, yeah, December 17th. And uh, now we still have some snow in northern Pens Pens Pennsylvania, New York State, central New England. But it's all rain in New York and uh, Connecticut and uh, on the coast there, Long Island, New Jersey. Philly, Baltimore, D.C., Richmond, North Carolina, it's all in West Virginia. It's all rain in this area. Um, and again, there's their front like this, but that's where your snow is. And it, it's just not a cold enough pattern. And because of what's going on the West Coast, really, it's what it is. So uh, here we have now we can take a look at the pattern for December 19th and December 20th. And notice in both these examples, we do have high latitude blocking here over Greenland and Baffin Island. 
so a negative uh, NAO here. But uh, again, we're not getting the pattern on the West Coast. You see this big trough here in the Gulf of Alaska, another piece here. So th there's no flow going, dropping the cold air in. There's none of this. So you're getting the flow like this. And uh, we're not getting any flow here coming out of Canada at all. So that's this is all Pacific air, which is mild air. So you have the Atlantic looks okay in both of these maps, but the Pacific looks like shit. And that's one of the problems we have with the pattern right now. If we look further down the road here, this is November 22nd. So the European is detecting this southern low here. The GFS several days ago was making this a, a mid-Atlantic snowstorm. That's given up on that idea. So both models agree that there's going to be a large, powerful low off the, off the Georgia coast here, Florida coast here on December 22nd. But it's all rain. Um, it's early in the season for that, and it's definitely all rain. And you can see that very nicely. Um, this here is the um, – oops, let me clear that out. This is the European operational now for 204 hours of December 24th. You can see the big low off the Florida coast. Again, there's no cold high here at all. So this is all rain. Even if it gets into Virginia, it's all rain. And here's the upper low right here. It's a monster system. And we have a big ridge here like this. So this system is forced out in that direction. It does not come up the coast at all. Meanwhile, here's the next Pacific bomb coming in with more big, big energy trough coming in the West Coast. And look what's going on in Alaska. Again, not a great pattern here at all. If you look at the European ensembles, 180 hours out, it, you can see it's got that system off the southeast coast here. And then look at this monster trough here coming in with this way. And we have our ridge in the middle portion of the country where it's pretty warm. Nice blocking here, but the Pacific is just terrible for in East Coast winter weather. It just, it's just terrible. I'm sorry, it is. I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, here is uh, 240 hours. Now, things are changing a little bit here. Maybe this is Christmas Day. Uh, let's take a look, see here a little bit. Uh, we have this high latitude blocking here. You can see in both these models, that's a negative NAO. We have a 50-50 low here over southeastern Canada. That's nice to see. And we have a split flow in the pattern. Now, we still are not getting any direct cold air in. So the flow is doing this. You see that? We still have a southeast ridge here a little bit. And the flow is doing this. But there's no flow coming, bringing the cold air down. So it's still, so the Pacific is still really bad. The Atlantic looks a little better. So it's very, it's marginal. It's what it is, really. Um, and then we look at 318 hours out. This is the weekend after Christmas, December 28th. We have a trough here over the southwestern states, 50-50 uh, low, but there's still nothing. And uh, again, we have this ridge right here, the little bit of a flat ridge here. So any low pressure here is going to track in this direction, which is not what you want to see. And again, still nothing over the northwest Canada, just a trough there. So that's not what you want to see. And if we look at the big pattern here, this is 360 hours out. It's not good if you like snowstorms for the east or over the eastern United States. Look at the troughs lining up this way. We have a bit of a ridge here in Alaska, big broad negative anomaly here in the western and southwest states. That's not good. Uh, Scandinavia here, we need this. That's okay in the future. Sometimes the Scandinavia block moves to Greenland and the Arctic region, but right now the Arctic oscillation is positive. The NAO is neg is positive. It's just nothing going on here. There's no PNA and the EPO is positive. So not great. If we look at the latest trends on the charts, you can see where the trend has been. Uh, this was uh, all Arctic oscillation now. And um, look at the date here. This is December 1st. Look how negative it was for much of the autumn. And then suddenly December hit, whammo, went positive. NAO, consistently negative. See this in November? And then December 1st hit, whammo, positive. And then the same thing with the PNA. The PNA up and then down, up and back and forth. So that's not much of a change. Uh, the PNAs keep flipping, but clearly big changes on the Arctic Oscillation and the NAO. Uh, this was the EPO, which is the Alaska Ridge. You know, when the EPO is negative, you get the cross-polar flow. And again, constantly negative through, through early November. And see that in mid-November. And then as soon as December hit, bam, turn positive and shut off the supply of the Arctic air. Now, if you look at some of the projections here, this is from, uh, you know, uh, this is the reforecast uh, GFS where they uh, run the old version uh, many, many times and they take the mean of it. And you can see here, this is from, uh, you know, ESRL. Uh, this is the reforecast. Uh, and uh, you can see that the PNA remains very strongly negative, which means a lot of troughiness on the West Coast. All right. Uh, the NAO goes strongly negative, and the EPO goes is positive, and then goes negative at the end of the second half of the month. So, 
And the Arctic Oscillation here goes negative, supposedly, and then maybe goes back to neutral uh, at the beginning of January. So the Arctic Oscillation goes negative, the NAO goes negative, the EPO goes negative, but the West Coast still not great. And uh, that's, you know, that, that that's how this model forecasts. If you look at the ensembles, uh, this is the European, the GFS, this is the Arctic Oscillation. Uh, both models, the GFS keeps it consistently negative. Uh, the European is negative, then kind of neutral, and then close to neutral here for the rest of the month. So the GFS has got more negative Arctic Oscillation, which we can see here. That's why it, it has this. See that? That's GFS. And that matches this, again, um, pretty closely. It's much more negative here on the GFS. Okay. Uh, if we go on to the um, North American Oscillation, uh, the European is a negative here on the top of the chart. You can see that. And then it goes negative here. And then it's neutral. And then it goes back to negative again, the neutral at the end. The GFS, same sort of thing. Negative here, close to neutral, negative here, neutral again. Okay. Well, that's pretty good agreement. This is the uh, Eastern Pacific Oscillation. Notice that the European is consistently positive with the European Oscillation all the way through. It goes neutral here. The GFS is positive and then goes negative in the second half of the month and that's what is reflected this this is gfs here and again if we this is what that's showing notice that the epo again uh positive then negative that's gfs that's what this is showing right here positive then negative the european not quite showing that something somewhat different so keep that in mind and then finally um, we got the EPO. So if we look at the MJO here, uh, we, again, we see some interesting developments. Now, uh, you know, it, notice all these models here. This is the European here, and this is the Canadian, this is the Japanese, this is the European uh, monthly. So all in phase two, phase two, you see that phase two, and then they move it back into the neutral circle uh, by the end of December. See that? They all go neutral circle. Now, the implication is that in January, they're going to come out and go into phase 7, 8, 1, and 2 and start a cold cycle. That's what the implication is. They might all do that. That's speculation. We don't know that yet, but it's a possibility. Now, in phase 2, the problem is it leads to this in December. That's a pretty mild a map for the middle part of the country and seasonally mild over the East Coast. So it's not a, phase 2 is not a cold pattern in December. But again, look what happens at the second half of December. All of these MJOs go into the neutral circle, which means that something else is going to be driving the pattern, not the Maddie and Julian oscillation. So, and finally, I do want to point out that the Rossby wave model here, which is taking the big uh, long wave uh, patterns, the Rossby wave train, which move across the globe, and it, uh, you used to get general trends for temperatures and troughs and ridges and that sort of thing. So, uh, this is ta this is the recent one here, taken from. Uh, I guess it was sort of December, uh, when was this, uh, from uh, December uh, 10th, yeah. And you can see here that uh, this is valid for the end of the month going into early January. And what the Rossby wave train model does, and again, this is experimental. You can see it's got a very strong block over Greenland and a big negative anomaly here over the United States, and then a nice big ridge here in Western Canada. That's what this model is showing. Well, again, it's experimental. I just want to show you that maybe there, you know, if those who are really bummed out of winter, you shouldn't be. And this is now the uh, January 5th to 9th. You can see this massive trough here over eastern Canada, eastern U.S., a big ridge on the west coast. And that's a pretty cold looking map. And then this takes us in the middle of January. There's a huge trough over the eastern United States and a huge ridge over the uh, west coast. And again, um, some blocking over Greenland as well. This would also be a very cold and stormy looking map. So... Uh, again, uh, keep the faith, folks. You know, uh, it's December. We've had a lot of mild Decembers over the last 20 years, uh, and we ended up having a lot of cold and stormy marches. So that's part of what I think the climate has shifted here a little bit over the last 20 years. Decembers are over the eastern United States, so almost always either slightly above normal or way above normal. And then February it continues into March, and March ends up being much colder than normal and stormier than normal. That's just the way things have uh, been working out over the last 20 years. And I don't see any reason to go against it. I didn't have a problem with the mild December. I thought that was going to happen. That's exactly what's happening in the eastern United States. It's not been a blowtorch, but it's been a mild December so far. And now the plains in the Midwest, it's also been uh, pretty mild, but also they've gotten some snow too. So there you go.
Anyway, this is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you over on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.